four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia with a multitude of national and international space research experiments. Houston now controlling the flight of Columbia, the international research mission, finally on the way. The loss of the crews of STS-51L Challenger and STS-107 Columbia marked some of the darkest days in manned spaceflight. However, through their sacrifices, space travel has continued and become even safer as a result. These 14 brave astronauts and their valiant vehicles will be forever remembered with the help of the new display inside the Space Shuttle Atlantis exhibit at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Spaceflight Insider got a look at this very deep and meaningful exhibit. Well, welcome to Forever Remembered. This is NASA's memorial to our fallen crews of Columbia and Challenger. The concept started originally from NASA leadership. Our Center Director Bob Cabana and our Administrator Charlie Bolden um, came forth with an idea to build a memorial uh, that would serve as the agency's memorial, a place where we could honor and pay tribute to the crews and also pay homage to our fallen orbiters. So they came to me with that concept and we explored it and that started off on a great four-year, amazing, heartfelt, um, difficult, challenging, but amazing journey to get to this point. This is what we call the Remember area, also known as Fallen Friends and Hero. What's so important about this special part, which is the first part of the entry into the exhibit, is this is where we pay honor and tribute to our fallen crews. We have our fallen crews of Challenger on this side, and our crew of Columbia on this side. Um, our crews were part of our NASA family, and their families today are still part of our NASA family. These, and we call them fallen friends and heroes just for that fact. They're heroes to the nation, they're heroes to all of us, but they were also our friends. They were our friends, our coworkers, our mentors. So we want to encapsulate that feeling in this part of it. And we also want the guests that walk through this portion to feel the presence of the crew, to be surrounded by them, to get a sense of who these amazing people were, what made them tick, what made them start from being little boys and girls, starting with a small dream and ending up achieving the highest heights of their career, and then to share that with the world. So if you come in and I'll show you some examples of that. Um, on each side of the exhibit you'll see very, very powerful artifacts. Um, artifacts loaned by the families. For example, uh, we have this case is the commander of Columbia, Rick Husband, and you'll see very personal artifacts that represent Rick. Um, you'll see, for example, his favorite cowboy boots. He was a proud Texan. You'll see his Cub Scout or his Boy Scout uniform. You also see his Bible underlined with his favorite passage, and the picture of the crew just prior to launch. A very rare photograph showing the entire crew of Columbia praying before launch uh, for their mission. Um, you'll see very few words with them, and that is so you can interpret them. We certainly realize that every person that comes through Forever Remembered is different. We have a, a beautiful diversity in people, right? So I want each person to be able to, to relate to that person in any way that they connect personally. Um, the same can be said with the Challenger side. This is the case for Commander Dick Scobie in his case. And it shows, um, for example, here, his t one of his favorite t-shirts he wore almost every single day after work. And that represents the 35 new guys when he got brought on as an astronaut. He was very, very proud of that. Uh, he was also a pilot for the aircraft that flew the shuttle on top of it, a very unique achievement. And then it goes back to his flight helmet in his earlier days. And as we walk through, um, you're not going to see awards. You're not going to see a lot of write-up on these folks. We wanted to express who these people really were. We know that they're heroes. We know that their achievements were astronomical. We know that they went to the highest heights of their career, but we wanted to make them relatable. And as we come to the end of um, Fallen Friends and Heroes, our Remember section, uh, we thought it very appropriate to include a quote by President Ronald Reagan, which states, the future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted, it belongs to the brave. Because these folks were, were heroes. They gave the ultimate sacrifice. They believed so much in what they were doing that they risked that to help bring us into the future. 
And it was also important to have President Reagan as part of the exhibit as he was a healer for the nation and the world at a very, very tragic time. But personally, through each one of these crew members and families, he was a personal influence and a personal inspiration of healing to each one of those. So he wanted to include him, it was only natural to include him and his message in this exhibit for years to come. This is the area we called Reflect. This is a very, very special area of our exhibit, which we also call an experience. And this is a place where we pay reverence and honor to our fallen vehicles. Uh, we had two beautiful vehicles, Columbia and Challenger, with, with great histories and the crews that flew on them. So we wanted to, as part of this very powerful, difficult, but important story to tell, it was very um, important for us to include these very difficult artifacts to share, uh, shared for the first time with the world. You'll see a piece of the side wall, the side of Space Shuttle Challenger, uh, never seen before since the accident. And there was a very long process in discussion of what's the proper piece. So uh, when we were down into the chamber where the pieces were, uh, we wanted to find the right piece that um, the guests could connect with, they could identify with, but also wanted to show the dignity of Challenger, the power and the beauty of Challenger, and the strength. So it was very important to find that one right piece. On this side um, of our special space called Reflect, we have an artifact of Columbia. These are the windows. Um, behind these windows you could see the crew members launching into space. You could see the earliest crews of, of um, John Young and Bob Crippen on Columbia's first flight. And then through these windows you can see the crew of Columbia um, 16 minutes from home, almost home, flying their spaceship with everything they had to get to the runway. So the very, very powerful pieces, um, Bob Cavana calls them um, the windows to the soul of Columbia. And I think that's very powerful and poignant um, because they do, when you reach through, you see into the vehicle's heart. To see each individual family member's special choices for representing the memory of their family member, and then to turn that corner and to see the panel from Challenger and the window frame from Columbia was extremely powerful for me, uh, very emotional for me, but I spent many, many minutes standing in front of the frame window of Columbia, thinking of the past times that I enjoyed with the crew of STS-107. I would encourage everyone to go see this exhibit, but you have to understand that I see that exhibit from a very personal perspective. As a family escort for the Columbia crew, as a person who was there prior to launch, during the mission, and there waiting for them to return home, uh, gave me a very powerful image and a lot of powerful and, and wonderful memories of the people that I knew as colleagues, as friends, and as heroes. So this is the third section of Forever Remembered, and we call it the recovery section, and it's broken into three smaller sections. Um, importantly, the first one is the emotional recovery. So you're going to see very, very emotionally powerful imagery and video of what it was like from the very first day of the accident, where all of us were just hurt in the heart. And what it felt like for us as NASA workers to go through that, what it felt for the families to go through that, and really the nation of the world because we all grieve together. With the inclusion of many cards and letters, these are real cards and letters that were sent in around the world from students. And often, in trying to tell a story, who can tell it better than kids? So we try to include their exact words and their imageries to have them help us guide that story of sacrifice loss and why it's important to go on. Also part of the physical recovery story is we wanted to tell the story of the accident. Not only bringing the pieces home of Challenger in Columbia, but also what happened. So we do that in a very powerful way without using many words. A very complicated story, but we did our best to try to make it digestible to folks to understand what happened to Challenger and what happened to Columbia. And that was a key component because our whole desire at the end was to fly again. What we have here is the last part of our recovery section. So we went through the emotional recovery, the physical recovery. 
Now it was time to, in the name of the crew and their memory, return to flight. That's what they would have wanted us to do, and that's exactly what we perceived to do and pursued. So what we did is we put together a very beautiful montage. We wanted it personally done by the inside to show what it was like. This is a very personal thing for all of us and representing all of the workers out here. So this shows through the kids once again how powerful it is for us to return to flight, not to give up, to per persevere in the face of tragedy, to keep continuing to go. So you'll, you'll see in this section, which is return to flight, um, a beautiful montage of some, in some cases, never seen before 4K, highest resolution possible footages of the STS-26 crew getting ready for launch post-Challenger and what it was like for those heroes to get back on board after Challenger and losing their friends. You'll also see the crew of Columbia strapping on board and getting ready for their return of flight on STS-114 after losing their friends on STS-107, so very powerful. You'll also see the work of thousands of amazing Space Center workers that came together to do our best to fix the vehicle, to make it as safe as it can be, um, to get it ready for that return to flight action. They leave the exhibit, they can look up and see the nose of Atlantis, and they can see, here's what we did. We did go back to space. We did do it for the crew of Challenger, the crew of Columbia. We're dedicated to never forget them, to always remember them, and we're also dedicated to learn those lessons so we never go through this again.